It's difficult when you're in the desert because that was a symbol of the covenant of God. It's difficult to rejoice in the promises of God when you're walking in unbelief and in a backslidden state. It's hard to talk about the promises of God. You say, well, where are God's promises? All that we see is unending sand. We don't see God in those situations. But the minute they began to obey God, something else happened. The Passover was then observed. You'll notice it says, verse 9, God says, Now at last that you've had a renewed obedience, I've rolled away your disgrace. Verse 10 of chapter 5, On the evening of the 14th day of the month, while camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Passover. The very day after the Passover, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread and roasted grain. Isn't that interesting? They said, now we can actually rejoice. This is only the third time they celebrated the Passover. Once in Egypt, once after they crossed the Red Sea, and now again. Why? Why not celebrate the Passover in the wilderness? (laughs) Well, again, it's hard to celebrate the Passover. It's hard to rejoice. It's hard to rejoice in your redemption when you're walking around in that land of disobedience and joylessness. It's hard. Remember the story of a woman who was planning to commit suicide. The pills were already in her purse, but she thought that she would go to church one last time just to say goodbye to God. She thought, I'm just going to go there and say goodbye, and then it's it. She even cleaned her house very nicely so that the family would not come back to a mess. She walked in, and you know, I don't know, Jerry, do you remember, we, don't, we haven't sung it in 25 years, but you know that song, Oh, Say, But I'm Glad, I'm Glad? We used to sing it way back when you and I were boys. <laughs> Little ditty, Oh, Say, But I'm Glad, I'm Glad. She walked in, and she heard these women singing that, and she became so angry, she felt like shouting, Oh, say, but I'm mad, I'm mad. And somebody saw her distress and took her into the prayer room and said, We're going to stay here and we're going to pray with you until that depression leaves. And it did leave. And years later, I wrote her a letter because of something I was writing, and she said, Even though I still have physical problems, the depression never returned. What is my point? It's hard when you're in disobedience. It's hard when you are depressed to sing the songs of Zion. It is hard to celebrate. And the people were experiencing that. Now they were called to a new obedience and so they could celebrate the Passover and also the produce of the land and they didn't need manna anymore. I love this because right there under the nose of the enemy, because remember now, Jericho had not yet been conquered. That's in our message next time. Right there under the nose of the enemy, they already began to enjoy the blessings of Canaan. And the minute you and I come to that place of brokenness and death to self, we begin then to already begin to enjoy Christ's blessings, even if there are still giants in the land that have not been conquered. This is from my heart to your heart. I want you to know today that God did not save you so that you could spend years and years of a boring life in a spiritual wilderness. That's not why you were converted. It was to bring you into the land to enjoy God. And that's why the scripture says that we might know the length and the breadth and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with the fullness of God. That's why we were saved. Not to stay in the wilderness, but to get into the land of Canaan. Yes, my friends, symbolically, we're supposed to get into the land of Canaan. This is Pastor Lutzer. And you know, even in the book of Hebrews, the Bible stresses that there is a rest for the people of God, and it refers to Joshua, who gave his people rest. Now, don't misunderstand. Just because we are supposed to enter into the depth and the fullness of our relationship with Jesus Christ, that does not mean that the battles are over. It's one of the mistakes we make, and if you think that your battle is over, uh, very probably you're going to be losing because the battle is going to come back. But what it does mean is we have the resources to be able to fight what is up 
ahead. And what I'd like to do is to spend the next few moments talking to you about your future, reminding you that whatever you face, maybe it's a health issue, maybe it's a matter that uh, has come because of the financial crisis in your own life as we are experiencing it even in our nation, maybe it's a relational matter, Maybe you find yourself in an experience like uh, I heard about just the other day where another wife decided to walk out on her husband. My friend, will you take out time today to yield to the Lord and to say, Oh God, walk with me in my battle, but trusting Jesus the whole way. Thank you, Dr. Lutzer. That was Dr. Erwin Lutzer with part two of Let's Get Ready for Battle. Another message in his series, Getting Started Right, Lessons from the Life of Joshua. Tomorrow, this message will conclude with more insights from a place called Gilgal. Running to Win comes to you from the Moody Church in Chicago to help you understand God's roadmap for your race of life. Getting Started Right can be yours as a six-message CD series. The series is our thank you when you give a gift of any amount to support Running to Win. Just call us at 1-800-215-5001. That's 1-800-215-5001. Online, go to OfferRTW.com. That's OfferRTW, all one word, dot com. Or write to Running to Win at Box 11174, Chicago, Illinois, 60611. This is Dave McAllister. Join us tomorrow for our next Running to Win.